Hello again. Hope you're doing well. I'm Hardleg Joe, if you didn't know, and today I'd like to talk to you about the mainstream media. You know, news networks, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, stuff like that. Pretty much everyone seems to distrust the mainstream media right now, and rightfully so. All the major American news outlets are huge private corporations owned and operated by a handful of very wealthy people. They have a financial incentive to bend the truth in their favor, and there's essentially zero government regulation or oversight to keep them honest. Even ignoring their political biases, the mere fact that they're run for profit causes some problems. Just like the content creators here on YouTube, news networks get most of their money from advertisers. And in the game of advertising, it's all about getting people's attention. The best way to do that is through shocking clickbait headlines and sensational stories. Basically, news companies earn money by manipulating you. And because of that, you cannot trust any media outlet to report on the news fairly or accurately. Now that being said, I still think there's some value to the mainstream media. Just because they are exaggerated and biased doesn't mean they can't be trusted at all. There's still a lot of useful information you can gather from these sources, you just have to know how to analyze them properly. The same is not necessarily true for the alternative media, the smaller companies or even individuals who talk about the news on sites like YouTube and Facebook. These alt-media outlets often claim to report the news more accurately. And don't get me wrong, some of them do. The problem is, most people don't apply the same level of scrutiny to them as they do to the mainstream media. Like, I've met quite a few people who will dismiss the big news agencies without a second thought, and then blindly trust a smaller agency just because it's smaller. This despite the fact that alternative media is still a business. They may be smaller businesses, but they still have the same profit motive as the big businesses. They still clickbait you and exaggerate their stories. They are often just as manipulative as the mainstream media, sometimes even more so, because they have even less oversight than these big companies do. As much as we'd like for things to be simple, the truth is complicated. There are no completely unbiased news sources. No matter where you go, you will always get some amount of misinformation. Being an informed citizen is not about finding media that isn't misleading. It's about understanding how the media misleads you so that you can take that into account. Which is what I'm going to be going over today. So, just to start with, I want to reiterate that every mainstream media outlet in America is a business. Which means they exist entirely to make money. This has a lot of downsides. I personally think it would be better if news agencies were, you know, run for the benefit of society rather than profit. But this does have one upside. It makes them predictable. Because as silly as it might sound right now, the mainstream news business is built on trust. It's the one selling point they have, the one thing that differentiates them from random rumors you hear online. The various media companies are constantly competing with one another to prove who is the most trustworthy, who is the most fair and balanced. And the only way to build and maintain trust is to tell the truth as often as possible. Every time a news network lies, they are taking a financial risk. Because if someone can prove that they lied, then not only will they lose a portion of their audience, and possibly a portion of their advertisers as well, but the competition will capitalize on it. Because a major news network lying to its audience is itself news. News that the liars can't report on without harming themselves further, 
but that everyone else sure as hell can. Because of this, mainstream media outlets base as much of their reporting on the facts as they possibly can. Simply because it's not worth the risk to lie, not when telling the truth is easier and usually has no downsides. Now this is not to say they never lie to you, they, they certainly do. Just that when they do lie, it has to be worth it. I'll elaborate more on what I mean by that later. Right now my point is, most of the time, major news networks are reporting on the truth. They may exaggerate the truth, or downplay it, or spin a narrative around it, or twist it in a thousand different ways, but it is rare that they simply make up a fake news story. How they manipulate you is much more subtle than that. Their main tactic is word choice. For example, the United States has a bit of a crisis going on right now at the southern border. There's a lot of children from Central and South America trying to cross into the United States, and they're being detained by the government in overcrowded, unsafe facilities. Now, while Trump was president, progressive news outlets would run headlines that said things like, Trump policy puts kids in cages. Now that Biden is president, though, those same news networks are running headlines that say things like, unaccompanied minors still being detained in migrant overflow facilities. Now, both these headlines say essentially the same thing. Migrant overflow facilities are the cages, the exact same cages in most cases. And unaccompanied minors is just a fancy way of saying kids, kids who are without their parents. Neither headline is lying to you. They are both absolutely true. There's not even any exaggeration going on here. And yet, that first one hits you a lot harder on an emotional level. Everyone understands kids in cages. It's a short, blunt sentence that uses common words, and it just sounds awful, like something a fairy tale monster would do. You don't get that same reaction out of the second headline. It's longer, it's wordier, it's technical. And if you don't keep up with the news, you probably don't think of migrant overflow facilities as the cold, unsanitary cages that they are. This is how they manipulate you. Not by lying outright, but by phrasing things in a way that engages your emotions. If they can make you angry, or afraid, then the part of your brain that processes logic will just turn off. You, you stop thinking clearly, and you don't analyze what's actually going on. So if the media wants to get you riled up against something, they'll phrase it very bluntly, in a way that makes you emotional. And if they want you to ignore something, then they'll make it sound really boring and technical, so you don't get invested. A good rule of thumb is, if watching the news or reading a headline makes you angry, it's because the writer wanted you to feel that way. You can write about politics in a way that is calm and friendly and fosters discussion. That's exactly what I'm trying to do on this channel, and I don't think it's very difficult. So if you read something and it makes you upset, that's being done on purpose you're being manipulated into paying attention. And you should question why someone went through the trouble to make you feel that way. This holds true for the alternative media as well. In fact, it seems to be much more prevalent online. There's a lot of videos that get passed around on social media. Videos with scary music playing in the background with a grainy, sinister filter on the footage and bold red text telling you how bad something is. There's also a lot of angry, ranting people online. People who will yell and shout and go out of their way to show you the most rage-inducing things they can find. And it's important to realize they're doing that to trick you. Politics doesn't have to be angry or scary. 
we can discuss things like adults. In fact, that's how things actually get done, not by shouting at one another, but by having conversations about the issues. But they don't want to have conversations. They don't want you to think about the issues. They just want you to feel something and turn your brain off. They want you to be angry or afraid so they can manipulate you more easily. Either because they have an agenda that they are pushing or simply because they want to sell you something. It's no coincidence that a lot of these online personas end their videos by selling mugs or vitamin supplements or asking you to donate to their cause or asking you to share the video so their channels can grow. It's all a business tactic. Alternative media is a business and it's a very profitable one. Remember this the next time you watch something that upsets you. Stop. Take some time to calm down, and then when your head is clear, think not only about the content of that video, but why someone made it the way they did. Sometimes stories are just upsetting, no matter how they're told. But more often than not, it's the way they're told that affects you. But I digress. While triggering your emotions is a popular and easy way to manipulate you, it's not the only way. Let's go back to my example headlines from before. Aside from the emotional language, there's another difference you might have noticed between these two. The first one blames a specific politician, while the second one doesn't seem to blame anyone at all. This is a tactic I call obscuring the subject. In the first headline, the former president is the subject of the sentence. He is the one responsible for doing the bad things. In the second headline, though, the subject has been obscured. Unaccompanied minors are being put into cages. Who's putting them there? Why? It's apparently not important enough for you to know. This same tactic works in reverse, too. Like, if progressive politicians do something really good, something nearly everyone agrees on, like raise the minimum wage, then progressive media outlets will be happy to give them credit for it. You can expect them to put headlines that say things like, Senate Democrats pass new minimum wage law. But the conservative media will obscure the subject. They don't want their ideological opponents to get credit for doing something good, so their headlines will read something like, New minimum wage law passes. Who passed it? Not important. No need to think about that. And obscuring the subject is just one type of selective reporting they can do. The news can change how you perceive a story by leaving out all sorts of important information. They can even not report a story at all. In fact, that's probably one of the biggest ways the media can manipulate you. I just, for example, media companies that are against gun regulations tend not to report on mass shootings. Or if they do, the reports are as brief as possible, with as few details as possible. Because it's easier to push the narrative that guns aren't a problem if your audience is rarely presented with real examples of gun violence. This applies to police brutality as well. You'll often find people who think that excessive force is not a widespread problem. And that's because they get their information from sources that go out of their way to avoid the vast majority of incidents that happen. By not reporting on stories that go against their narrative, media companies, both big and small, can paint a one-sided view of the world. Their perspective always seems correct because conflicting information is never shown. And again, none of this is actually lying. It's not even necessarily deception, because the news can't possibly report on every single story. And even with the stories they do report on, they can't tell you every single detail. Because, as I said before, the truth is complicated. There's just not enough time in the day. Looking back at our border crisis, for example, the current president 
is partially responsible for it. But so are the last five presidents, and the members of their cabinet, and everyone who served in Congress during that time, and the American citizens who elected those politicians, and even the media outlets that helped sway those elections. When it comes to big international problems, the stuff happening right now is never the result of just one person's actions. We got to where we are today thanks to decades worth of foreign policy decisions made by hundreds if not thousands of different people. And no news story can accurately explain all that. The truth is, they have to oversimplify things. They have to draw a line somewhere and decide what information to include and who to blame. And where they draw that line will show you exactly what their real political leanings are. By looking at who the media gives credit to, who they blame, and who they ignore, you can figure out what their biases are. Now, most people think of bias as a bad thing. And it certainly can be. But it's not inherently bad. Think of bias as being like a body fat. Everyone has some fat on them. Obviously, if you have too much, it can be bad for your health. But even if you weigh a healthy amount, even if you build your muscles to the human limit, you still have some amount of body fat. Anyone claiming otherwise is either lying, delusional, or they don't understand what they're talking about. Likewise, everyone has some bias because everyone has different life experiences, which give them a slightly different perspective on the world. And that's what bias is at the end of the day. It's a perspective that makes you favor one thing over another. I'm an American, for example, so I'm going to be biased towards policies that benefit America. Just like with body fat, there's nothing wrong with a healthy amount of bias. The problem is too much bias and the people who don't want to admit they have biases. Now the problem with too much bias is fairly obvious. Like, it's one thing to acknowledge that you like America and you like ideas that benefit America. It's another thing entirely to say that America is a perfect country without any flaws, that anything it does is good. At that point, you are so biased towards America that you're ignoring reality. You can't make an informed decision on how to fix our country's problems because your bias has blinded you to the fact that we even have problems. And as for the people claiming they don't have any biases, they are like the people who claim to be completely fatless. They are either lying to deceive you, they are too delusional to see their own biases, or they just plain don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Whatever the case... I would not trust them or their opinions. Now, with all that in mind, we can finally get to the root of how you look at media. Yes, you want to find news sources that have as little bias as possible. But just because a source has bias doesn't mean it's useless. As long as a media company is honest about their biases, or at the very least, so blatant about them that you could tell without them saying it, then you can still gain some useful information from them by taking that bias into account. The key is to have perspective. Think about how you view the world. Like, literally. Like, you have two eyes spaced slightly apart. Each eye sees the world from a slightly different perspective. And because your brain knows that one eye is slightly to the right and one is slightly to the left, it can use those two separate perspectives to form a single vision of the world that is fairly accurate to what's in front of you. This is the same thing you want to do when it comes to media consumption. Don't just pick one source or one perspective, because that will limit what you can see. Get multiple perspectives. Take their biases into account. Like, feel free to watch some conservative media if you want. But keep in mind that they will be manipulating things to make the conservatives sound better than they actually are. 
And then, when you're done watching them, watch some media from another perspective. Look for the elements that both of them agree on. Pay attention to how each one frames the same issues differently. And using those two points of view, build a picture of the world that incorporates both. I guarantee you it'll be more accurate than just listening to one side. And if you can, if you have the time, don't stop with just two sides. Especially in America, there's this notion that there's only two possible viewpoints, progressive and conservative. And that's just another way the media can manipulate you. By only ever showing you two sides to an argument, they make it seem like those are the only two sides. And they aren't. There are a lot of different ways to look at the world, and they aren't as crazy as the mainstream media would have you believe. There are liberals and libertarians, socialists, communists, and even anarchists, all of whom have some decent points to make. But you have to hear it from them. Listening to a conservative explain socialism is like listening to a Muslim explain Christianity. At best, you're hearing what an outsider thinks people believe, based on second-hand knowledge. At worst, you're hearing outright lies from someone who is opposed to that ideal. I said earlier in this video that the big news organizations don't lie to you unless it's financially worth it. Well, this is probably the best example of that. No mainstream media company will ever say anything good about socialism. Because socialists want to reduce the power of big businesses. And even the most left-wing of news networks is still a business. Socialist reforms would lose them a lot of power and a lot of money, so it's worth the risk to outright lie about socialism and make it seem far worse than it is. Especially since none of the other news networks are going to call them out on it. They're, they're all in the same boat on this one. If you want an accurate perspective on socialism, or any ideology other than progressive or conservative, then you have to go to alternative media. It's the one thing alt media is good for. Just make sure they aren't trying to scare you. Make sure they aren't trying to make you angry. Make sure they aren't too biased. But yeah. I think you get the point. Identify biases, get many perspectives, and use them to try to find the truth. This is much easier done if you don't work alone. If you can, try to find some people to discuss the news with, preferably people who don't necessarily share your views. The more eyes you have looking at something, the more perspectives you get, the more likely you are to spot problems. It won't be easy, but unfortunately, it's what you gotta do in this day and age. At least for now. There are some ways we could fix the media to make it more reliable. And not just by socializing it, though I think that would certainly help. That, however, I'll save for another video. If you're interested in seeing that, or you have some ideas of your own for how we might fix the media, let me know down in the comments. I'm genuinely interested in reading what you have to say. For now, though, I think I've talked long enough. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, stay safe out there.